Endings are hard. Just ask Mass Effect 3. I've had enough of your tabloid journalism. All right, we sympathize, video games, and lucky for you, some clever people have already figured out the optimum way to end a game that surprises, delights, and rewards the player for their hours of sticking with it. That's right, it's the unexpected, out-of-genre, choreographed dance finale. Behold these seven magnificent dance numbers we never saw coming. We all knew Bayonetta could bust a move, but even so, her curtain call after you finish the game comes as an eye-opener. At the end of the game, Bayonetta gets her dance on in an intricate routine in front of a fountain of Lucasade, lecched at by a twirling camera while the synth saxophone goes bonkers. It escalates into a chorus line reunion of nearly everyone in the game, angelic monsters and all, and then finally a duet with Jean on top of an aeroplane while her cat suit strobes on and off, because why not? <laughs> Games take note, this is an excellent and much deserved celebration for a protagonist who, say, just punched God into the sun? Saints Row 4 has one of the finest licensed soundtracks of all time, and yet somehow it saves the best song till last. This is how we do it. In the send-off for the Saints at the end of the game, the whole gang breaks it down on an on-brand purple dance floor. Even Sid the hovering ball robot gets in on it. And you didn't think a floating limbless sphere could break dance. I mean, I assume you didn't. It's not too late for other final heartwarming character insights as well, such as it turns out Johnny Gat has less rhythm than a melted metronome. True fact, the makers of Saints Row 4 told game site Polygon that at one point they had wanted a mega Bollywood-style dance spectacular to cap off the game, but there wasn't time. Never mind, this is still an ideal coda to the game and leaves me with a lasting urge to go clubbing with the Third Street Saint. And I hate clubbing. If you're going to pay the big bucks for licensed songs, this is how you get the most out of it. Bayonetta's dance the epilogue has a precedent. Many of the people who made that game previously worked at Clover Studios, the developer responsible for the masterful bonkers beat-em-up God Hand. At the end of God Hand, protagonist Gene has spent countless hours beating people senseless with his supernatural right arm to the Hawaii Five-O theme. So it's to their credit that they don't hold a grudge and instead all turn up to join Gene for a big stage dance number that perfectly rounds out his long and punch-filled adventure. In fact, they all seem to be much better dancers than Gene, who still seems to be punching. Talk about a one-trick pony. Hi, my name is David Cage. I'm the writer and director of Fire Night. I just thought there's a few things you should know before you get started. Before David Cage games were moody affairs full of child kidnapping, they were moody affairs full of yo-yos and superpowers and giant green bedbugs. <laughs> that David Cage was the sort of David Cage that would include a bonus ending after you finished Indigo Prophecy, aka Fahrenheit, in which the principal cast cut a rug in a car park. <laughs> That's a cast that includes a nun, a crash test dummy, David Cage himself, and a sentient internet. Why disco? Why a car park? Why anything? These are the questions that makes the special dance ending of Indigo Prophecy as mystifying as the game itself. Spot on. You can't blame Amp 3 developer Indie Built for being bored with extreme sports games by 2005. Snow gods are all about two things. Snow and fun. And great hair. By that time we'd already burnt out on more serious efforts such as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 to 4 and Underground 1 and 2, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX 1 and 2, Kelly Slater's Pro Surf. Dave Mirror's Freestyle BMX 1 and 2, Aggressive Inline and Johnny Mosley Mad Tricks. So for the third game in the otherwise conventional Amped snowboarding series, they decided to bin the earnest action sports theme in favour of, well, this. Big flashy rings and sparkly things for you. Girl, I just got to make you say ooh. Naturally, a game as batshit crazy as this needs a suitably unhinged ending. Giant musical extravaganza featuring enormous robots doing the can-can, anyone? Hey, congratulations, you just beat the game. You're the greatest player. Perfect. This whole block and bitches keep coming back because they love it a lot. No need to ask questions or words, so I stand, I do what the fuck I want. 
In True Crime Streets of LA, FBI agent Masterson is always giving your character Nick Kang a hard time for breaking stupid regulations. Like the one about not stealing trucks, and the one about not nearly running him over in those trucks. Afraid I can't do that, pal. So once you've unlocked all the other endings in the game, it's nice to see them put their differences aside for the bonus ending, in which they have a dance-off. Okay, it doesn't make sense in the context of the story, but who can say they didn't spend the whole game secretly hoping this would happen? And it turns out, Masterson's got moves. Unfortunately, this touching show of unity is cut short when Agent Masterson remembers that he left the oven on. At least that's the only explanation I can think of for this reaction. You might spit a good game, but not quite like Dame. Heartbreaking. Dance through the pain, Nick. Dance through the pain. You might spit a good game, but not quite like Dame. Once again, the dynamic duo spring into action to protect the good and true citizens of Gotham. Yes, the Lego Movie video game does have that dance routine with the world's catchiest song. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool. Damn it, now I'll be humming that all day. But our favourite LEGO dance comes at the end of LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. The game includes a bonus mission set in the 1960s Batman TV show, in which the caped crusader thwacks, zonks and kapows his way through hordes of enemies before facing off against the Riddler, the Penguin and the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. Oh no, our nefarious old foe, that plundering Punchinello, the Joker. If this video has taught us anything, though, it's that everything can be smoothed over at the end with a razzle-dazzle dance number, even bad blood between you and psychotic clown murderers. <laughs> Hang on, is that Bruce Wayne dancing with Batman? I'm just confused. Out of sight, baby. Well, that about wraps this case up. So there was some compelling evidence that everything should end with a dance number. Got a favourite routine that we missed? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more videos like this from outside Xbox. No, I've, we talked about this, I'm not doing it. You dance, I'm not doing it. Alright.